السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا وإمامنا وقدوتنا وقرة عيننا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم نشهد بأنه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجعلها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم تنزيله مذكرا المؤمنين بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We bear witness that there is no deity or divinity worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam is indeed the last of prophets and messengers sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
along many other previous messengers and prophets <coughs> sent to him with the message of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the message of tawheed, of monotheism, the message of mercy, the message of compassion, the message of human brotherhood. Indeed, that is the message of justice and the message of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us and account us among the members of this ummah, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. And may he raise us on the day of judgment in the Jannah al-Firdaus with the presence of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam and his companions. My dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. For those who are following the news, we've seen lately almost like a, a contradiction or dichotomy on how news gets covered. So when there is news of an attack, like the terrorist attack that happened, the criminal attack in Boston in the middle of last month, April 15th, we all witnessed how there was an attempt to focus on the re religion or claimed religion or religiosity of the perpetrators. We all witnessed how this became, at least in some media outlets, an issue to focus on which mosque they pray at or don't pray at, which views, how many times they read the Quran, which country they come from and how is it linked to Islam and the history of Muslims and what's Dagestan and what's Chechnya and we go into the depth of Islam itself rather than the criminals themselves and we forget that actually on a daily basis as various law enforcement agencies and government agencies would tell us on a daily basis crimes are committed by domestic terrorism or domestic terrorists who are influenced by racism, by a false interpretation of Christianity on a daily basis. Actually, this is the number one threat in America. But if you just watch the news, you would think there is only one enemy and only one threat, and that threat has to do somehow with Islam. Although numbers show us that actually the least number that exists in terms of terrorism comes from this community. Nevertheless, we can talk about why the media does that, why some in media do this, why some politicians focus on that. But my main interest is why the public falls for it. Why does the public fall falls? Why does the public fall for such misrepresentation of Islam and Muslim? Let me share with you some numbers to know what I'm talking about. Right after the attack, the Pew Research conducted a survey of Americans to see how their views are and asked a question. So does you know to check whether they perceive Islam to encourage violence more than other religions. That was the question and they surveyed people in America. Very diverse group of people of all religious backgrounds representing the diversity of America. So it's almost like a, a sampling poll of Americans. And the numbers were, unfortunately, not good for us. It could have been worse. But it showed that 42%, 42% of Americans said that Islam or the Islamic religion is more likely than others to encourage violence among its believers. 42%. And about 46% said, no, they don't believe that Islam, basically they said, Islam does not encourage violence among its followers. 46. So 42 versus 46. And about 13 said, I don't know. Or maybe their views are not true. 13. So, yes, more Americans can distance Islam from these acts. That's the good news. The bad news is that 42%, if you're walking on the street, if you're counting your neighbors, chances are every 10 houses, there are four of your neighbors who think you or your family members are more inclined to commit violence because of your faith. And this is sad news, my dear brothers and sisters. This is the faith that was taught to us, delivered to us by Muhammad 
So when people misunderstand or misrepresent that faith, it is not just a personal thing that you can forgive. Say, you know what? They thought I'm a bad neighbor. That's something you can live with. But this is something, it's a, a testimony, a false testimony about the Prophet ﷺ and his teaching. And we are responsible for that. This is a fard ayn on all of us, not fard kifayah. Defending the honor of Muhammad ﷺ and his teachings is not something you can say, hopefully somebody will take care of it. Now, compare that to the numbers in 2002 to see how things have changed. Every year, the Pew Research has done that survey. And since 2003 and up, the numbers have been similar. So 2002, interestingly, when people were asked the same question, 25% of Americans said that they believe Islam is more likely to teach its followers to commit violence. 25%. It jumped from 25 to 42. <coughs> and those who said no, they don't think Islam has to do anything to do with violence, were 51%. A majority of Americans actually said no. They don't think Islam has anything to do with violence. And about 24%, a quarter of the country, said, I don't know. We're not sure. So when we see the numbers, and I know I'm giving you a lot of numbers, but we shifted from 25% saying Islam promotes violence more than other religions to 42. Where did that number come from? It came from the people who said, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not sure. So the 25%, 24% who said, I don't know, in 2002, now only 13% of them said, I don't know. What happened? Someone convinced 10% of Americans that Islam promotes violence more so than other religions among its believers. Someone was able to get to these confused people or people who are unsure before we did, or in a more convincing way, in a more amplified way, and convince them that Islam is a bad religion. So not only were not able to correct, correct the misperceptions of the 25%, but actually they were able to build on it by getting those who are confused. Now, very briefly, who are these people? You know, just so we know who are the people who hold such views. That Pew Research elaborates. It said, when they looked, actually among men, 48% of men believe that Islam promotes, teaches violence among its followers, more so than women. Women, only 35%. When we look at races, it showed that 45% of whites believe Islam promotes religion. Blacks, 34%. Hispanics, 33%. Age was a, a factor. Apparently, the older you are, the more biases you hold against towards Islam, basically. So younger people, 18 to 29 years old, only 31% of them believed Islam promotes more violence. 60% said no, not, not so. But when you look at people who are 50 to 65 year old, basically, and up, the number were like in the range of 53%. 53% saying that actually Islam promotes more violence. And the same changes happen when you look at who are more, the more conservative, people who have more biases and less, uh, basically more unfavorable views about Islam. People who are more liberal and progressive have less unfavorable or more favorable view of Islam. I gave you a lot of numbers. What I was trying to <coughs> tell you, the story I'm trying to make is that while there will be people who are, will continue to promote anti-Muslim sentiment, misinformation about Islam, it's a whole industry. We're going to live with it. This is going to be for a while. It's a whole industry. Spending hundreds of billions of dollars over the last few years. Documented numbers, foundations, individuals, bigots, you name them. We talked about it in different talks or khutbahs. The question is, what are we doing to reach out to those average Americans around us? Fellow Americans, your neighbors, your co-workers, your classmates. The reality is, Islamophobes are not huge in number. They just have high vocality. They're very vocal through media, through blogs. But we have five to six, maybe four, maybe eight million Muslims. But millions of Muslims in America. Imagine five to six American million American Muslim, five to six million American Muslims. Imagine if most of us are engaged encountering Islamophobia, not by screaming and shouting, by being who we are. 
MashaAllah, we have a lot of successful Muslims. Doctors, teachers, engineers, business owners, uh, scientists, pharmacists, accountants, professionals of all walks of life. But very few of them make it known that they are Muslim. You know, when you think and you do the same survey about any other religious community in America, Catholics, Mormons, Jews, others, what you will notice is most people have favorable views about the followers of those religions. Because most people interact and engage with somebody from that, that religion or that religious community. They don't know that they're interacting with Muslims. So if I'm Jewish and I'm active on labor issues, worker justice issues, I'm active on social services issues. If I'm Catholic and I'm raising money to help the homeless, I make sure people know I'm Catholic. They know that there is something called Catholic charities. They know. But when they're dealing with Muslims, unfortunately, most Muslims are not engaged whatsoever. The overwhelming majority of Muslims are not engaged. They're not actually talking to their neighbors. They're not talking to their classmates. They're not, they talk to them, but they don't talk to them as we are Muslims. And when they do get more engaged, we are almost ashamed of wearing the Muslim hat. Figure of speech, I'm not talking about the kufi. I'm talking about being able to say, yes, at our mosque we're doing some event. At our mosque we, we, we are doing this activity. So what I want to do is just to remind myself, myself and my dear brothers and sisters that actually da'wah is a requirement of us. And I want us to change the way we see da'wah. We've been restricting da'wah to one aspect of da'wah, which is great. You know, we go and give a copy of the Qur'an, we give a nice book, or we share a nice hadith with somebody. That is a good da'wah. You know, deliver on my behalf even a verse. But there's a bigger form of da'wah, and a bigger picture of da'wah. It's da'wah through action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He told the believers, Allah says, Let there be out of you a group of people inviting to all that is good. Yad'una khayr. Khayr is Islam, there's nothing better than Islam, but as our scholars say, Islam is one of the khayr also. There are many other things that serve people, bring goodness to them. And Allah explains it when He says, Let those people also order good, enjoy good, and forbid what is evil. And these are indeed the ones who are successful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear. Let there be among you people who do that. This is in times actually when there is no threat on us, when most people are neutral. So fardu kifaya, it becomes something that if enough of us do it, the rest of us can go on with their life. Obviously we live in different times. Today, there is not enough, there isn't enough being done by the few. So it becomes a fardu ayn now. Now that Islam is being misrepresented, mischaracterized, our Prophet is being defamed, alayhi salatu wasalam, then it becomes an obligation to make that form of da'wah, the da'wah that enjoins good, Good not in the words and the action. We need to take da'wah to the next level, the level of action. Let people see us talk about the beauty of Islam by seeing us practicing Islam. They don't want to hear from us. They're tired of hearing from us. They're tired of hearing from all preachers. They, they are tired from hearing from all those who sit and patronize how great religion is, including Islam. People want to see how great is Islam in action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he described this ummah and he said few verses after the, the one I mentioned now. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas ta'muruna bil ma'rufi wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you are the best of nations. Talking about the believers. Sent or ever raised to mankind. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised this ummah to mankind. Allah did not create us to sit in a cave and worship, to sit in our homes and worship. Worship is part of our life, but it doesn't end there. It begins there. The continuation is we were sent to mankind. To do what? So we can enjoy the good 
and forbid the evil and believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what makes this ummah good in the eye or in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders the Prophet telling him, tell the believers, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى رَصِيرُ He said, O oh Muhammad, tell them, this is my way, this is my path. I call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I make da'wah, reminding people about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ala basira with knowledge. Ana wa min ittaba'ana. And this is the path of those who follow me. The Prophet ﷺ was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tell them, this is my path. This is my path. There are no other. You know what? There's only one freeway. I'm sorry. That's it. There's one freeway that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for us. We can sit down and try another one. Pave another one. The pave... The pavement was done. The paving of that way, that sabir, was done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his messenger. And Allah wanted us to know that. So he told the Prophet he could have inspired him to say it and he would have said it. But Allah included that in Quran that will continue to be recited until the day of judgment. By telling him, Qul hadihi sabiri. Say, O Muhammad, tell the believers, this is my way. This is my way. And my way is to call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala basira with knowledge. Knowledge of Islam. Knowledge of the one I'm making da'wah to. Knowledge about how to make da'wah to them. Because you know what works in Pakistan, or in Egypt, or Bangladesh, or Malaysia, or Nigeria, might not work here. And what works in Orange County does not necessarily work in LA. Basira is part of that. Understanding how to make da'wah. And he concluded the verse, this is my way and the way of those who follow me. May Allah make us among those who follow Muhammad And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes in a verse, in a beautiful meaning, or I will conclude with a verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala asks a rhetorical question. A rhetorical question that is very common in Arabic language and in the Quran. When Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ Who is better? Allah is asking, who is better than the one that calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Makes da'wah by calling people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, so who is better, really, who is better than the one who calls on the way to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or calls people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? and works righteousness and says, I am among those believers. I am among those who submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah continues the verse, with the next verse that says, وَلَا تَسْتَوِي الْحَسَنَةُ وَلَا السَّيِّئَةُ اِدْفَعْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ فَإِذَا الَّذِي بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَهُ عَدَاوَةٌ كَأَنَّهُ صَضِيقٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ كَأَنَّهُ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ وَلِيٌّ حَمِيمٌ Wali is like a close, close, beloved friend. Allah says, push, repel what is evil with what is good. Because Allah says earlier, said, good deeds are not equal to bad deeds. They can be. Sorry, it cannot be. If you push the bad deed, the bad act with a good act, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you will see that even the enemies who wish you all the adversarial relationship, is almost like a wali, hameen, close, close, beloved friend, subhanAllah. My dear brothers and sisters, Allah is giving us the techniques of how to change things. You wanted to change the numbers that you heard at the beginning? You heard the numbers, they're wallahi miserable numbers. 42% thinking Islam preaches, teaches its followers to commit violence. That is not going to change unless we follow that example that Allah gives us. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَيْهُ Who is better? No one. If you want the secret, the magic pill to changing, changing things, is each one of us should take it upon, upon himself or herself to say, I'm a Muslim. وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ You don't do things secretly. This is not about bragging. This is not about showing off. It's about making the link, connecting the dots. Why am I good? Why am I merciful? Why am I generous? Why am I compassionate? It is because Islam teaches me to do that. Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, my teacher, my master, my role model, 
is the one who taught me that. Let people make that claim, my dear brothers and sisters. Because Allah tells us in that same verse, if you do that, you would see, you repel the evil that they give you. The Islamophobia, the, the hatred. We don't counter hatred with hatred. With forgiveness, with patience, resilience, sabr, action, compassion. And Allah is promising us that the one with whom you have adawa in a mastery will, will, be, will happen and will become ka'annahu waliyun hamid. My dear brothers and sisters, I call upon myself and my dear brothers and sisters to get engaged. This is not a time to sit and wait for the next terrorist attack in America or abroad that will be blamed or connected or linked to Islam and sit down and worry. Why is the media doing this? Why are politicians? What can we do? Preventive action to make people realize that criminals exist in every faith group, every religious group, every race, every community. They're always bad apples. We want people to make that distinction that they make with every other group to make it with us too. But unless we provide them the good example, it is hard for them to make that shift. It is hard not to fall prey and victim to the Islamophobia rhetoric. Islamophobia rhetoric tells them all Muslims are bad. It's just about how bad they are. In order to counter that, we want to show them the good Muslims at our workplace, at our masajid. Alhamdulillah, we're doing things. This is not to say we're not doing. But I really want to encourage you to become part of activism, civic engagement. Last week, a group of Muslims, about 150 Muslims, went to Sacramento as part of the second annual Muslim Day at the Capitol, organized by CARE, CARE California. 150 Muslims from all over the state, young and old, men and women, students, professionals, activists, imams, and showed up there and they met with about 100, 500, 10 assembly members and state senators out of 120. We have 40 state senators and 80 assembly members. We met with about 110, almost all of them. Wallahi, I'll tell you that. Even people who usually don't like the Muslim community were forced to respect the Muslim community because they realized this is a community that is active, engaged, that has issues. They were, these Muslims were lobbying on issues that are not necessarily connected to the Muslim community alone. Immigration reform, treating immigrants, undocumented people with respect. The other issue was promoting and pushing for the rights of domestic workers, the nannies, the uh, <coughs> homemaids, the house, house maids, the, uh, uh, the people who take care of the elderly. Uh, these are the people who are not respected with equal rights in America. So Muslims were there pushing for those rights. And the last one was pushing for freedom of speech on campus. <coughs> issue that impacts everybody. Wallah, I can tell you, I can't tell you how many times I heard from every elected official saying it is so, such a great thing to see every type of American and every type of Californian, including Muslim, coming and making those requests. This is important. I can assure you everyone we worked with would leave with an idea saying, okay, Muslims are engaged. They care about larger society. No matter how long they listen to Fox News and others, they're not going to be swayed otherwise. An example, another one that I would hope all of you would participate in is the Muslim Youth Leadership Program which is happening end of June, June 26, where high school students, especially seniors and juniors, are taken by care for four days in Sacramento and trained for four days on leadership skills, public speaking, civic engagement. If we want to change how people perceive us, we have to make that change. Don't expect anyone else changing that perception on our behalf. We have to basically roll up our sleeves and do that change. So I hope, inshallah, you can pick up the information and encourage your kids, your, your brothers, your sisters, people you know in the community to participate and be part of that. Last but not least, reminding everyone, inshallah, uh, to make sure they attend and participate in the fundraising for the school uh, at the measure here. There are a lot of items being sold. Every penny that goes will be collected, inshallah, will help students who cannot afford to be at the school. So this is your way of giving back, inshallah, to help empower and educate our young Muslims to be, inshallah, proud Muslims. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله ولكم فاستغفروا فأفضل المستقبل بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد 
we just make special dua to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he helps our brothers and sisters struggling in Bangladesh, in Burma, Myanmar, in Syria, in Palestine, in Somalia, in all places where people are suffering. And we make special dua for brothers and sisters in Pakistan who are going through elections now. We ask Allah to make it safe and that right leadership is elected that will hopefully uh, preserve the security, uh, inshallah, and, and the uh, rights of all people in Pakistan. As, as we all know, things are not stable in many parts of the world. And Pakistan is one place where people are suffering. عباد الله إن الله ملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد كما صليت وسلمت وباركت على سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا اللهم متعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا وذرياتنا أبدا ما أحيته وجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا اللهم لا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم واجعل الجنة هي دارنا ومأوانا ومآلنا وهمنا يا رب العالمين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إلى كل خير ومن أراد بهم شرا وضرا فخذوا أخذ عزيز مقترب اللهم نسألك أن ترفع البلاء عن أخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان اللهم وإننا نخص أخواننا في بنجلدش وميانمار بورما وفي سوريا وفي فلسطين وكشمير ومصر وتونس وليبيا وكل مكان يظلم فيه المسلمون يا الله اللهم أن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم نخص دعائنا إخواننا في سوريا اللهم نصرهم اللهم كن نصيرهم فإن لا ناصر ولا نصير لهم يا رب اللهم ثبت أقدامهم وتقبل شهداءهم وارحم موتاهم وتقبلهم شهداء وعاف مرضاهم وفك قيد أسراهم ورد لاجئيهم إلى إلى ديارهم مكرمين معززين بنصرك المؤزر يا رب العالمين اللهم نسألك أن تجعل هذا النصر المؤزر عاجلا وليس آجلا اللهم زلزل الأرض من تحت أقدام الظالمين اللهم زلزل الأرض من تحت أقدام بشار وزبانيته وأعوانه وأزلامه وكل من سكت عن ظلمه بدون عذر يا الله اللهم إنهم لا يعجزونك عليك بهم يا رب العالمين يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله اذكروا وشروه على نعم ذلكم وأقم الصلاة